I'm not somebody that usually does a video on what software can't do. Um, but we are about just over a month past some of the biggest upgrades we've ever got to Lightroom, which is all of the masking tools that we have inside of there. And I keep seeing the same three questions over and over again. As the dust has settled, three things keep reappearing. And, and worse, which is the reason why I'm doing this video, people seem to be spending time trying to figure these things out when in fact there really are in, in a sense limitations to what can be done here. So I thought I'd cover what those three limitations are. And for two of them, I can at least give you a little bit of a workaround of what you can do instead. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one is probably the most popular one, which is invert. Okay. Where we want, we, we do some work with a mask and we want to invert that. So let me walk you through it. Cause you can see the limitation pretty quickly on this one. Go to my mask tool. I'm going to go to select subject. It's going to select the subject. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter, open up the exposure and the shadows. I'm doing this fast. I've already done a full long, full length tutorial on this. So I'm going to assume, you know, how to use the tools and that now you want to learn a little bit about some of the limitations. So in this case, I've selected the subject. I'm going to hit the letter O for overlay, which is going to turn on the red overlay here. And it, it's done a good job. It hasn't done a perfect job, which is pretty typical. I mean, you're generally going to have to go in and do a little bit of extra work. So what I would do here is hit subtract. I'd subtract with the brush tool and I'd go in and paint out the areas where I don't want it to affect. Right around there. All right. And then it's missed a couple of areas. So I'd go to add and hit add, go to the brush tool and maybe paint in. You can see down there with the tail, it missed that. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then hit the left bracket key, make my brush a little smaller and get the hand up there. So essentially I'm going to press the letter O again. Essentially I've, I've gone in and I've made my subject brighter using select subject, but using a couple of other little sub layer masks inside of here. So there's a total of three sub layers in there. Well, the common question is, is okay, I did this work to select my subject, but now I want to reverse that. I want to invert it and do something to the background. So what would we do? Well, we'd go up here to this top level mask, click on the little pop out menu and choose duplicate. Cool. So we duplicate it. And now I go down here. Remember, you can't invert that top level mask. That is a limitation. Okay. So you can only invert the sub layers. Now you can start to see the, the reason why we're going to have trouble here, because now I can go and I can invert the select subject and maybe make that background a little bit darker. But now I've got two other sub layers inside of there. So the only workaround is to go to each one of them and choose invert. And the problem with that is, is in some cases it may work. In some cases, it may not be exactly what you're looking for there. But uh, again, there is no other workarounds to this. I do know that Adobe knows this. They're very aware of this. It's not a bug. It's just a limitation that's currently built into the way that they're doing this. Um, I do know they're aware of this and I'm pretty sure at some point and hopefully in the near, not far future, we will see an update that lets us go to this top level mask and do an invert so that we can invert everything that was done inside of there. Now the next limitation that we have, but there's a little bit of a workaround is can I take the mask that Lightroom created and put that into Photoshop? This is a quick, perfect time for a very quick word from our sponsor. Um, so if you like the stuff that you see here, I have a 90 minute course. It's very affordable. It's called the Lightroom Masking and Brush Deep Dive. It actually includes a bunch of brush presets for free with it. This is the biggest change I've ever seen inside of Lightroom. And I created this deep dive course to get you through the learning curve because I don't want to see you in four months stumbling upon something that you didn't know that it could do because it is such a big change and people are having so much fun with it. That's the thing I hear over and over again. Number one, people have loved the course. Um, and then number two, people are having so much fun doing because editing is just easier now. And I want to see you having fun with your photos, which is why I created this very short course to help you get over that hump. So hope you'll swing by the website to check it out. Now on to our next one. I'll switch photos here to something where we would maybe want to use select sky. All right. So the problem arises, we'll go over here to our masking tools and you can see I've already done uh, some adjustments to uh, the foreground. That's before that's after. But I'm going to create a new mask here and I'm going to choose select sky. And in this case, maybe I want to make that sky a little bit brighter, maybe even add a little bit of saturation 
to it, a little bit of magenta into it, a little bit of extra color, okay? And even pull down some of the highlights here, okay? So I've done something to the sky. The common question is, is can I carry this mask over to Photoshop? And the answer is, is you can't, okay? And there's no workaround to make Lightroom carry the mask over into Photoshop. Remember, these are just adjustment tools that have existed in Lightroom forever. You were never able to do this. So, uh, but there is no workaround to get you to do this. But what you can do, let me go ahead and, and delete this one. What you can do is go photo edit in and not do your adjustments inside of Lightroom. Go take the photo over into Photoshop. Once you get there, you can then go up here to the select menu and you have select subject and select sky in the select menu in Photoshop. So I could go in here and choose select sky. That's going to put a selection around the sky. And then I can go to my adjustments panel. And by the way, the selection, in my experience, they're close. I find that they're not an exact duplicate of what you see inside of Lightroom, but usually generally pretty close. And you always have your quick selection tool to add or subtract from that selection area. And you always have your select and mask uh, window that's in the little button up here that will, and if you can't, don't get it up there, you can go to the select menu and get to it. But you've always got select and mask to go in there and refine that if you want to. Then what you do is once you get your selection, you go to your adjustments panel, go to, let's say in this case, I wanna do some brightness and contrast that creates a mask for you. And now I can go in here and make that sky a little bit brighter. If I wanted to, I could always go to my adjustments panel to something like hue and saturation and increase the saturation. Keep in mind, it didn't carry that selection forward with that mask, but it's really simple to get it there. All you have to do is hold down your option key on a Mac or your alt key on the foot on PC. So option or alt click on this mask and drag it to copy it. It's gonna even say replace layer mask, yes, to drag it, to copy it to that new layer. Again, option or alt drag will copy. If you simply drag it, it will move it, but option or alt will drag it onto that new layer. So now you're carrying that mask forward onto each one of them. Again, not exactly what you're looking for. All I'm here is to give you as good of a workaround as exists uh, for what these limitations are. Now, our last one, I'll switch back over here to Lightroom sadly does not really have a workaround, but I'll let you know what it is. I have to assume this is gonna get changed eventually. I understand the design limitation, but if they can get through this, uh, it opens up a lot of speedy workflow possibilities. So here's what we did on this photo. I used, I used a brush tool to make a mask that you can see on the photo here, okay? This is before I did any sky selections in that, that previous tutorial. So I used a brush tool. If I were to synchronize the changes on this photo to another photo, all right, let's say you did a time lapse or something along those lines. If I were to synchronize, this mask would synchronize exactly as it is, right? But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to go to create a new mask and I'm gonna choose select sky and we'll go in there once it selects it and make that a little bit brighter. Now what I'm gonna do is shift click in the film strip at the bottom all right, I'm gonna shift click on the next photo because I'm gonna basically tell Lightroom and essentially I would probably never shift click on the next photo. I would probably shift click on a bunch of photos because you, you generally wanna do this to a bunch of different photos. But I'm essentially saying, hey, I'm gonna go down here to the sync button in the bottom corner, okay? I'm gonna go down here to the sync button after I've shift clicked. So it's saying I'm gonna sync, let's click on the sync button. It's saying I'm gonna sync the settings from the photo that I'm looking at. That's how you know where they're getting synced from to whatever other highlighted photos are in the film strip, okay? So from the photo that's right in front of our faces to whatever other photos you've highlighted in the film strip. So I wanna sync all of the settings and you'll notice there's a little masking section here. So I'm gonna turn that on. One of them has an exclamation point next to it. And it says AI powered selections need to be recomputed on the target photo. What does that mean? Let's hit synchronize and we can find out. Are you sure you wanna continue? Sure, let's go ahead and replace that to the next photo. And let's go click on that one. Let's go take a look at our masks here. So you can see it copied exactly the same mask from the city shot over to here, which is not really what we wanted. It makes the point, but um, it copied the same exact mask from there over to here and it copied the top mask, but you can see the exclamation point on it. 
If I click on it, you can see next to the sky and then you can see it actually has not, it's telling you it needs to be recomputed. So I can hit update and it'll recompute and it will select the sky for this photo if that's what I want it to do, but it's not gonna do it automatically. So what are the implications of that? If you're doing time-lapse, if you're doing HDR, if you're doing something where you want to synchronize the changes from an AI powered selection, the brush, when we go to our mask and we create a new mask, brush, linear, radial, color range, luminance range, none of those are AI powered. Those will all copy over to the next photo just fine. The AI powered ones are select subject and select sky. Those are not gonna copy over. They're gonna need to be recomputed on every single photo. So just keep that in mind. There is no workaround for it. As I said earlier, I have to assume that Adobe is going to do some type of a fix for this because I can see the the workflow implications for it, right? You know, if I've got a hundred photos and I want to do something to the sky and apply it to all those photos, think about a preset, right? If I could make a select sky, put it into a preset, okay? And now I pull up a new photo and I click on that preset and it automatically knows to select the sky and make the adjustments to there. It's, it's the implications are huge and I can definitely see where that would be advantageous. So right now there is no workflow. Hopefully we'll see something in the future. Also, if you found this a little bit too fast for you, I do have a video that is a great place to go next where it walks you through all of these new masking changes from start to finish with lots of different examples. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, that's a great place to go from here.